Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, my Facebook videos. I appreciate you all tuning in. I appreciate you all coming to me for some help, some guidance, some tips, some recommendations. My name is Zach Pascarello. I am a bookkeeper. I'm a certified QuickBooks online pro advisor, and I own my own bookkeeping business, Harrisburg Bookkeeping. We operate mainly in the South Central Pennsylvania region, but we are able to serve clients virtually and remotely all over the country. So if you need any help with your QuickBooks, your bookkeeping, or just generally if you have any questions about your small business, please feel free to text me, call me, email me, message me on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, however you want to contact me. Let me know, and I am more than happy to help. And if I can't help, more than likely I will be able to point you in the right direction of someone who can help. So with that being said, I wanted to share with you guys today how I file my taxes, how I've been filing my taxes for the past five years. And this works if you have a relatively simple return, if you have a corporation or a partnership, chances are this will not work. But I would say the majority of people out there only have a W-2. Maybe you have a 1099. Maybe you have a Schedule C. But I would say probably the majority of you are just W-2 standard 1040 filers. So I'm going to show you a website that I've been using for five years. And it's been working for me so far. So I'm not a CPA. I'm not an attorney. I'm just sharing what has worked for me, and I hope this will help you guys. So, first of all, the website, freetaxusa.com. Just like it says, it's free. It's for the United States, and it helps you file your taxes. So, pretty straightforward. You can see right here, do it right, do it for free. You can e-file directly to the IRS. Federal is free. Unfortunately, the state charges you $15, or this website charges you $15 to file your state return. But typically, you can e-file on your state's website. So check that out. Honestly, I just pay the 15 bucks because it's easier. All the information is already entered. Kind of a no-brainer. So I've never gone to H&R Block. I've never hired an accountant to file my taxes for me. But from what I understand, H&R Block, they can charge anywhere from $100 to $200 to file your taxes. And they aren't really doing a whole lot of advising. It's up to you to gather all of your documents. So all of your tax documents for your health insurance, for your unemployment, for your interest, student loan interest, your mortgage interest, your W-2s, your 1099. It's up to you to gather all that information. So if you're gathering all that information already, I mean, you might as well just file it. And a website like this makes it pretty easy, pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you. They walk you through step-by-step -step how to file your return. So just click the start free return and I'm nothing against H&R Block, nothing against, obviously, you know, I'm a bookkeeper, I'm an accountant, like people pay me to, to help them file their taxes. So nothing against that. But if you have a W-2 and that's it, and maybe student loan interest or mortgage interest, got a couple dependents, chances are you can file your taxes on your own. So hopefully this helps. So create a new account whatever email address you want. So I'm going to create an account, harrisburgbookkeeping at gmail.com. That is a real email address that I have. Username. Harrisburg Bookkeeping. Phone number. password so a little pro tip that I like to do is I save all my passwords 
in an Excel document. I don't know if that's technically secure nowadays with all the hackers, but with all the different passwords and all the different security questions and text messages and phone calls, it's impossible for me to keep up with my usernames and passwords, especially with the special characters, 12 digits, numbers, capital letters. I just, I, I keep it in a spreadsheet. Do what you want though. Your security is obviously the most important thing when it comes to passwords, so. Okay, meet all the criteria. I remember back in the day, I just typed in six numbers and that was a password. Now we need symbols, numbers, capital letters, lowercase letters, eight or more characters. So they'll send you the verification code, your cell phone, pretty standard. So you have to use a legitimate cell phone number. I mean, I've never been harassed by Free Tax USA when it comes to marketing or phone calls or emails, so don't be afraid to use your actual phone number. All right, congratulations. You've successfully created your Free Tax USA account. We sent you an email so you can verify your email address. Let's get started on your 2020 taxes. So they already sent me the email. Open it up on my phone. Your new account has been created successfully. Awesome. Would you like to import your tax information from last year? So I don't have any information with this email address, but it makes it so easy if you just use the same software to file your taxes year after year so you can import your information from the year before. Did you know getting around is easy? Use the top menu up here to check your progress or jump to areas you've already visited. Awesome. You can take a tour if you want, or you can just hit continue because it's all pretty self-explanatory. Okay, first name. Zachary, last name. Pascarello, occupation. Let's say, I'll say I'm an accountant. Social security number. Obviously, type in your actual social security number, but I will not do that for the sake of this tutorial. Not putting in my real birthday either. Street address, let's see here, 9 Main Street, City, Harrisburg, State whatever state you live in, one eight, I don't know what the zip code is for Harrisburg. Okay, so enter in your actual address, your city, your occupation, all that information, pretty basic. Okay, and then here, it literally step-by-step -step walks you through all the questions you're gonna be asked on, an, on your taxes. So as you answer these questions, these are questions that get put into your, your 1040, your tax return. So, I mean, you could do it the old fat like you can actually fill out your 1040 which you know i would not recommend anyone do that unless you're a tax professional or you can utilize software like this where it it makes it easier for you to understand the information it's asking and it even has these little question marks and it explains right there for you so can a parent claim you as a dependent on their tax return answer that question do you want to contribute you know whatever do you want to donate to the presidential answer that question are you legally blind? Answer that question. Has this person passed away before filing this tax return? So, very straightforward questions. I think you should all be able to answer those on your own. No tax professional needed. Choose your filing status. Singled, married filing jointly, married filing separately, head of household, widow, or widower. I'm not sure. Help me decide. And boom. It even gives you some more information. So, if you have no dependents, if you're not married, pretty sure your only option here would be to do single, maybe the widow or widower. In my experience, the majority of the time, it's beneficial if you are married, you do have dependents to file, married to file jointly. But I recommend you consult with a CPA or a tax professional and get their advice because every situation is different. But 
the majority of the time, I do believe it is safe to assume that it is generally better to say married filing jointly. But if you want more information, you can do your own research. You can talk to a tax professional. So for the sake of this, I will say that I'm single. I am actually married, but for this, I will say that I'm single. Okay, do you have dependents or qualifying children? Another question mark. What's a dependent? What's a qualifying children? Child. Who is a qualifying child? A qualifying child, and it step by step. I mean, it can't get any more detailed than this. I mean, I mean, this website is awesome. It walks you through every single question. It gives you more than enough detail than you would ever possibly need. What if my child's other parent claims my child? All the information you need. So, do you have any dependents or qualifying children? We'll say yes. So, just fill out this information. First name. Zach, last name, Pascarello, little junior, crazy social security number, relationship to taxpayer. So a dependent does not need to only be your son or your daughter. You can see here there's a long list of possibilities for dependents. If you're not sure whether or not the person living with you or the person you're taking care of qualifies as a dependent, do some research on your own first. More than likely, you can find the information out on Google, or you can contact a tax professional, and that person can help you. But probably most of the people have stepchildren and children as their dependents. But if you're taking care of someone else, maybe someone else qualifies as a dependent. Information about your dependent. Did your child or dependent live with you in the United States for all of 2020? Yes. Is your child disabled? Did he provide more than half of his own living expenses? So if your child lived with you, but he paid for more than half of his stuff, you can see here it's not common for a dependent to pay more than half of their own living expenses. But if that is the case, say yes. That would probably affect how much money you're going to get back for your tax credits. So just be smart when you're filling this out. Be truthful, be honest, but also understand the answers that you're putting here could have monetary Im implications when it comes time to reducing your tax liability and your tax credits and getting your deduction at the end of the year. Is your dependent married? Is your dependent a U.S. citizen? Very straightforward. Did your dependent make more than $4,300? So did your dependent have a job? Did you provide over half of his living expenses? Yes. He is your dependent. She is your dependent. He or she lives with you. You take care of that person. You're providing over half of their living expenses. Congratulations. That qualifies as your dependent. So if you would have said yes or no to some of those questions, then the Free Tax USA will tell you, Zach does not qualify as your, as your dependent based on the, the questions you answer and how you answer them. So dependent, Zach Pascarello Jr. I have one dependent. Do you have any more dependents? No. Look at this. This is beautiful. An alert doesn't mean you've done something wrong. It just means we've seen something unusual on your return. You may continue with yellow warnings, but you should review them before continuing. If there's no error, simply continue with your return. It tells you right here. So I, I said I was single, but I also said I had a dependent. So it gives me an alert. Head of household status is better than single. It doesn't get much better than this. You can review this. You can change. So I'm not married. But for this example, I have a dependent. So I'm going to say head of household. And then it allows you to change. We're not seeing any other alerts right now. Thank you so much. Continue. Personal information. This is just to review everything that you put in is true. 
Did you or any dependents receive a CP01A notice from the IRS with an identity protection pin? What is that? Click the question mark. It walks you through right here what an identity protection pin might be. It's usually if you are a victim of identity theft. So if you have no idea what they're talking about, chances are you did not receive one. Phone number, second phone number, everything looks good. Hit continue. Now it's going to give you an option to upgrade to deluxe. So if you need to amend your returns, you can do that unlimited. It'll give you assistance with the audit center, live chat. It's only seven bucks. I wouldn't do it, but you're free to do what you please and spend your money how you'd like to spend your money. So now let's work on your 2020 income. Yes, I'll enter my W-2 now. No, I don't have any W-2s or skip for now. So chances are the majority of you have your W-2. And this is why it's kind of a no-brainer for me to, to file on your own if you just have a W-2 because you have to give H&R Block your W-2 anyway. So you already have this information right in front of you. So I'm not going to go through this, but all of this is directly from your W-2. It's very straightforward. Just follow the, the boxes. Like it says box one here, it'll say box one in your W-2. You just go down the list. Very straight. It looks, it looks like a lot of information, but a lot of these numbers are the same. A lot of the numbers repeat. Some of them are blank. Some of them don't apply to you. It looks intimidating and it looks complicated, but you're just copy and pasting information from your W-2 onto this website. So if you, if you hit save and continue, and if you miss something, it'll give you a red flag, tell you you missed something. So I don't feel, I'm not gonna enter that. So we'll skip that for now, continue. Other forms of common income. So we have W-2, interest. So if you have a savings account or if you have investment accounts, whatever you might have, you'll get a 1099 INT. And once again, it's your responsibility to give these documents to H&R Block. So you've already gathered all the documents. What's the point? You might as well just fill it out on your own. Save the $100, save the $200. Interest income, dividend income. If you had any mutual funds or stocks and you received dividends, you're going to have to report that. Unemployment compensation. So I've spoken with a couple of my friends and family members, and they have actually told me that they think they might have received unemployment, but they're not sure. They don't know where their 1099G is or how to get it. Really simple. Every state has something different. Just look on your state's website, do a quick Google search, how to get my 1099G for Pennsylvania. Chances are it'll be one of the first search options on Google. But if you did receive unemployment, you will want to report that. I think they came out with the new amendment. A certain amount of your unemployment will not be taxed for the year 2020. I think that's because of COVID. But look into that. Social Security benefits. If you're on Social Security or receiving benefits, you'll get this form. Any type of retirement income. If you have no idea what these forms are, chances are you're probably not getting it. And it doesn't have anything to do with you. 1099B, stocks or investments sold. And if you don't know what it is, hit the question mark. Free Tax USA does a great job of explaining things. Capital loss carryovers. So if you have a capital loss or a capital gain on previous year tax returns, a capital loss carryover can be used on your 2020 tax return. Look at Schedule D, lines 15 and 16 of your 2019 tax return. If Schedule D, lines 15 and 16 are losses, then you might have a capital loss carryover. It talks about the worksheet you can use to find out if you had a capital loss from the year before. Business and rental income, so 
non-employee compensation or 1099 miscellaneous income, business income. This is the Schedule C. So even if you, even if you don't technically have a quote unquote sole proprietorship, but you are a freelancer or a contractor, you can still submit a Schedule C. It's very, very important. Just because you don't have a sole proprietorship, which a sole proprietorship really is just a pass through entity. So it's just you just doing business as Harrisburg bookkeeping or doing business as John Smith landscaping. So that's really all sole proprietorship is. It's just a pass through entity. It's just you. So if you are a freelancer or a contractor, then you can still fill out a schedule C and you can reduce your tax liability with your expenses. So it does have an option here for partnership S corporation, rental income, farm income. I'm not going to get into all of this because this probably applies to a small percentage of you. And if you have a corporation, I'm sure you have an accountant who you partner with. So it gives you all of these options. Continue. It'll give you a summary once you enter in your wages, interest income. Once you enter in all this income, it'll give you a summary. And then up here, you'll see your federal refund as you go through. It'll tell you how much of a refund to expect. All right, so they've got my income. Now let's maximize your refund. It's exciting stuff. Standard deduction. It tells you right here, $18,650. You can choose to do an itemized deductions or you can just take the standard deduction. If you have a really expensive house, if you have a lot of student loans, it might be good to take the itemized deduction. You can hit continue. So you can go through the itemized deductions. It walks you through step by step. If you have any questions, medical, what are medical expenses? You can read right here. So if you had a lot of out of pocket medical expenses, you might want to do an itemized deduction. Like I said, mortgage interest, donations to charities, investment interest, if there was a disaster, I'm sorry for your loss. If there was a hurricane, tornado, fire, theft, car accident. So if you have something like that, that might be a little bit more complicated. Maybe talk to your insurance agent, talk to an accountant, do some research on your own. But if you don't want to take the itemized deduction, which I would probably say the majority of people take the standard deduction, but that's up to you to decide. Um, if you don't want to do the itemized deduction, you can just take the standard deduction. And kind of cool, if you do take the standard deduction, you can deduct up to $300 of your charitable contributions to qualified organizations. So if you donated to your place of worship or to a fundraiser, any qualifying organization, you can enter it there. And then it will compare. So if you, you can even enter in all of your itemized deductions, it'll compare your itemized deductions to your standard deduction. And then it'll tell you at the bottom here, your standard deduction of $18,650 is more than your itemized deduction. Do you want to use your standard deduction since it's larger? Yes. Recommended. Thank you. Marketplace health insurance. Good news. The IRS does not require everyone to report their health insurance coverage anymore for 2020. So if you got a 1095 a, the IRS only needs to know about your health insurance if you purchased it through the marketplace. So if you don't know what the marketplace is, then chances are you did not purchase your health insurance through the marketplace. And if you just got it through your employer, IRA contributions, do not enter your 401k contributions as an IRA contributions. 
So traditional or Roth, enter that in here. Individual retirement accounts. Enter any tr traditional IRA contributions, any Roth IRA contributions, and you should be getting documents from your individual retirement accounts. You should be getting official tax documents from them. So enter the information from there into here. I wouldn't recommend just trying to guess based on how much you think you entered. And this is also a great opportunity to reanalyze your financial decisions. Fresh start to a new year. Good opportunity to maybe open up an IRA if you don't have one already. I'm not a financial advisor. I would never offer up any advice to anyone. But what I do is I have a Roth IRA with Vanguard. And I love it. Vanguard is awesome. Highly recommend that Vanguard IRAs be used for anyone who is looking to open up an IRA. Super low fees. Super easy to work with online, very large company in the country, very well known. Okay, and then it asks here, did you recategorize any IRA contributions? If you don't know what that means, hit the question mark. Also, if you don't know what it means, probably doesn't really apply to you. And then did you make any catch up or excess contributions to the year before? So once again, if you don't know what that means, probably doesn't apply to you. It says here, not common. So a traditional IRA contribution can reduce your tax liability because you're putting pre-tax dollars into a traditional IRA. A Roth IRA will not reduce your tax liability. Now you put post-tax dollars into a Roth IRA. The big difference is whenever you retire, then you start withdrawing that money. Traditional IRA is taxed at whatever your tax bracket is when you retire. A Roth IRA is not taxed because it has already been taxed. So you pull it out when you retire and it's not taxed money. So maybe a good idea to have a little bit of traditional, a little bit of Roth, mix it up. I go 100% Roth. That's just me. College tuition expenses. Did you or your dependents have college tuition? 1098T. You will get that from your educational institution. So yes, no. I am currently enrolled at Penn State, but I'm going to say no. Penn State World Campus, little shout out. Pretty good program so far. Getting my master's degree in accounting. Big fan of it so far. Student loan interest. If you're paying student loans, you're definitely also paying interest. 1098E, you're able to deduct your interest payments from your taxable income. So pretty cool. I do have student loans still, but I will say no for the sake of this. Just moving on. Are you a full-time kindergarten through 12th grade teacher educator? Yes, no. We all appreciate you teachers and educational professionals. I don't know what I do without you guys and gals. Appreciate what you do. I could never do that. But we definitely need teachers. Educate the kids, the future of our country. Earned income credit questions. Do you have a social security number that allows you to work? Was your home just straightforward questions? And if you don't know the don't know that what the question is asking, just hit the question mark. But it looks like it's it's pre filling what you probably are going to answer. Yes, yes, no, 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 no. Congress passed legislation that lets you use your 2019 income instead of your 2020 income if it gives you a higher earned income credit or additional child tax credit. Free Tax USA throwing out free nuggets of gold. Good information. Thank you, Free Tax USA. Was your 2020 income less than your 2019 income? Yes or no? You may be able to increase your earned income credit if your 2020 income is less than your 2019 income. You can enter your 2019 income by going back to the prior year earned income screen. We checked, but unfortunately you don't qual qualify because I didn't have any earned income in 2019. So whatever you answer, whatever year's income was lower, 
it might use that. Did you receive, and then this is beautiful, did you receive your stimulus checks? So if you have not received your stimulus checks, you will say no, and then they will factor that in to your federal refund. So do not fear. If you have not gotten your stimulus checks yet, you will get them whenever you file your taxes. Did you receive an economic payment in 2020 from the first round, from the second round? Say yes or no. Very, very important to be honest, but also to say no if you did not get it and if you are entitled to receive it. Very important. When the IRS sent out the first economic payment, they based the amount of payment on the information they had from 2019. Based on the information you've entered so far, the first round of economic impact payment you qualify for is $1,200 based on myself and my fictitious son, Zach Jr. Did you already receive your $1,200? Yes. Second round, $600. Yes. Thank you so much. Since you already received an EIP payment of at least $1,800, you don't qualify for any additional amounts with your tax return. Okay. Thank you so much. Home energy credit. Did you make energy efficiency improvements to your house? Solar panels, energy saving exterior doors, insulation, roof, wind energy systems, geothermal heat pumps, fuel cells. If you don't know what that means, you probably didn't do it. But if you did, good on you. Thank you for saving the world. You can get a home energy credit. Child care expenses. Did you pay any work related child care expenses during 2020? Yes. Let's make sure your child care expenses are correct. Child care credit. Total paid. Let's see here. You don't have any dependents who qualify for the child care credit because you don't have any dependents that are under the age of 13. Oh, so I, I said that my, my fictitious son was like 30 years old. So I won't able to I won't be able to show you guys how to do this, but child care credit summary, child care credit. This is really cool, really important if you're paying for child care so that you can work. That can also reduce your tax liability. And then it has here a review of all of your deductions. You can edit it them at the end. Okay, health savings account, medical savings account. If you don't know what those are, you probably don't have one. But if you do, you can also reduce your tax liability by contributing to that and entering that information in. Your mortgage, vehicles and fuel, electric vehicle credit. They give you a little credit if you have an electric vehicle. Military moving expenses, employee business expenses, business meals, uniform. So if you paid any of this stuff out of pocket, you can get a deduction for that. All of that's pretty self-explanatory and also pretty specific, so I'm not going to go too much into detail with that. We're making great progress. Thank you, freetaxusa.com. Okay, so if you made estimated tax payments, I'm sure you did not unless you're self-employed. Um, this is all... Pretty unique stuff. Income, foreign accounts, cryptocurrency. Hello, cryptocurrency. Other taxes. This is all very specific. Probably doesn't apply to most people, but if it does, absolutely click the question mark. Do your research. If you don't know what it is, chances are it probably doesn't apply to you, but I still encourage you to read every single one of these options. Obviously, if you're going to answer a question yes or no, make sure you completely understand the question before you answer it. You want to go through the refund maximizer. Yes, let's see what it has in store for us. Make sure that you're claiming all the dependents that you can. So it even goes through and asks you very specific questions. If you don't know about your dependents, do you provide more than half of the financial support for a relative, such as a niece, nephew, parent, adult child, brother, aunt, or grandchild? That person might qualify as a dependent if you're providing that. Maximize your income. Do you have a child who received income? No. Maximize your deductions and credits. Do you own your home? 
Yes. And then it goes through all this extra stuff. So this is stuff that we've already talked about, but Free Tax USA is just doing its due diligence and helping you maximize your deductions. So don't get stressed out about it asking you the same question over and over again. They are just trying to make sure that they capture all of the accurate information. So they are trying to help. Let's make sure you've entered everything. W-2, 1099-INT, 1099-G, 1099-SA for, for health savings account. So even if you still want to go to H&R Block, even if you still want to go to your CPA, I would, I would recommend every single person do this anyway, just to see. If, if anything, it'll help you gather all of your documents. It'll provide a little checks and balances, a little checklist for you. That way, whenever you do show up to your to your CPA or to H and R Block, you're squared away. You know, hey, I could have gotten three thousand dollars from Free Tax USA based on my refund, and you're telling me two thousand. Am I wrong or are you wrong? Let's get to the bottom of this. So, honestly, even if you're going to H and R Block, I recommend everybody do this. It's free. It just takes an hour of your time. And then it'll even do your state filing. Did you live in Pennsylvania all year? Yes. Did you make money in any other state other than Pennsylvania? For example, if you work in a different state than where you live, own a rental home in another state, or own a business in a different state, answer yes. Were you a full year resident of Pennsylvania? Yes. What Pennsylvania county do you live in? So Harrisburg is in Dolphin County. I actually grew up on the West Shore in Bowling Springs in Carlisle. That's Cumberland County, but we'll say Dolphin County. Did you file the 2020 Pennsylvania extension? No. Taxes are due May 17th, so we are still good. Which Pennsylvania school district do you live in? We'll say Lower Dolphin. Save and continue. Pennsylvania 529 for qualified tuition programs. So if you contributed to a 529 in your state, then you can deduct that from your tax liability. I have one for each of my kids. Pretty cool, pretty nice little investment vehicle for your kids when they go to college. And it can reduce your state tax liability, which is cool. No. Military pay, if you're active duty military, thank you for your service. We appreciate you. Enter that information in there. 529, the ABLE program. If you don't know what the ABLE program is, chances are it doesn't apply to you. And if you do know what it is, answer the question accordingly. Unreimbursed employee expenses. Do you need to enter any employee expenses that were not reimbursed? If so, hit yes. If not, hit no. Is Zach Pascarell eligible for the Pennsylvania Tax Forgiveness Credit? To be eligible, your dependent must be a minor, claimed as a dependent. This includes a natural child, adopted child, stepchild. We'll say yes. And I do believe they are asking me this because I said that I was not married. So, if you have children, and you're looking into the tax forgiveness credit, what is tax forgiveness? You can receive a Pennsylvania tax forgiveness credit up to 100% of your income. The amount of credit you qualify for depends on your filing status and your income level. So I said I had zero dollars income. So I think because my income was below a certain threshold, they're asking me these tax forgiveness credit in income questions for Pennsylvania. Your Pennsylvania income tax liability is already zero because I entered zero on my income. So obviously these numbers are not accurate. I'm just showing you guys how easy it is 
how straightforward it is and how helpful Free Tax USA can be. Gives you a summary. Do you need to prepare another state tax return? No, unless you made money in a different state, in which case you do. So it'll automatically add your state return. You can remove it if you want. And then as easy as that, you are complete. You can file your return. It's that easy. I don't know how long this video has been. It's been 40 minutes. It's going to take you a little bit of time to gather all your documents, but it's that easy to file your taxes with Free Tax USA. If you just have a W-2, if you just have a mortgage, if you only have student loans, even if you have some interest income, some dividend income, even if you have a 1099, you can file your taxes on your own. And if you still want to consult with the tax professional, then I still recommend going to freetaxusa.com and doing this first. It'll give you a good understanding of what to expect. It'll help educate you on our federal tax laws and, and regulations, which is never a bad thing to be savvy on some of those things. So I hope this video was helpful. I'm not affiliated with freetaxusa.com in any way. I'm not getting paid for this. This is just genuinely how I do it. I wouldn't recommend you guys take my word or my advice for any of this. If you want some legitimate advice, consult with a tax professional or an attorney. This is just what I do. This is how I do it. And it's been working for me. So my name is Zach Pascarello. I am a professional bookkeeper. I'm a certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor, and I own my own business, Harrisburg Bookkeeping. Check me out on my website, harrisburgbookkeeping.com. I'm also active on my Facebook page. I post a lot of tips, tricks, recommendations about taxes and bookkeeping and business owners and sometimes just life in general. So I appreciate you all for watching this video. Thank you. I hope you have a great day. Call me, email me, text me, message me if you have any questions. If you want me to make any other tutorials, let me know. I'd be happy to help any way that I can. Thank you all. I hope you have a wonderful day.